Investors can be split in two main categories, institutional and retail. Institutional investors can be likened to wholesalers buying flowers in bulk from farmers. They spend money on behalf of their clients and tend to make large-scale investments. It's their full-time job. That's a lot of flowers. Retail investors are more like me, buying a bouquet of tulips with my own money. Their purchases are smaller and typically require a middleman, like a florist. Thanks. And just like online flower delivery companies have made getting your bouquets easier, platforms like Robinhood have made markets more accessible than ever. I heard that there was zero commission trades and I thought, okay, that's awesome. Then I can trade more frequently and not feel bad about it. Trading activity from retail investors has skyrocketed as a result. But in Europe, the number of people buying and selling shares remains very low. Many of the um, states in continental Europe are built upon a statuary pension system, which is, frankly speaking, 100 years old. And uh, so there would not be um, any promotion of private retail uh, ownership of stock markets in society, right? So basically Europe is missing 10, 20 years um, of that culture. So why is this? And with technology changing the way we trade, could European retail investing finally bloom? To understand why retail investing isn't very big in Europe, it helps to look at why it is big in the U.S. American households own $38 trillion worth of equities, either directly or indirectly. That's nearly 60% of the entire U.S. equity market. Christian, it's great to finally speak with you face to face, almost. <laughs> Christian Hecker is the co-founder of Trade Republic, an online broker based in Germany. Why do you think uh, U.S. players have struggled to build up a presence in Europe in the past? Well, I think the U.S. market and the European market are structurally very different, um, especially due to the lack of the 401k structure in Europe. Unlike a traditional pension, which guarantees you a certain income in retirement, a 401k depends on the contributions you make throughout your career. With a 401k, you choose your own investments, and your account balance fluctuates based on market gains or losses. That means the responsibility falls with the individual rather than the state. So in the U.S., there aren't many sort of social welfare uh, apparatuses in place anyway, so it's sort of like the onus is on you to uh, invest for your retirement. With no 401ks to encourage individuals to invest for themselves in the EU, savers have little direct interaction with stock markets. Instead, statutory or state pensions are more common, leaving investment decisions to governments or large financial institutions. But there are other factors at play as well. There is a, a, a perception, perhaps, uh, from the retail investors that uh, access to capital markets is difficult and probably reserved only to wealthy people. So there is a change of perception which is needed. Ugo Bassi is a top official for the European Commission's Financial Services Unit. The main issue is about trust. And the best way to build trust is to set up rules which are flexible enough in a way, but also uh, which protect the investors and make the investors feel protected. Europe has seen retail investor participation double since 2020, but it's still lagging behind other parts of the world. One piece of research estimates that retail activity makes up only 5 to 7 percent of total trading volume in Europe, compared to over 25 percent in the U.S. and over 60 percent in China. Despite that, there is a slew of startups in Europe trying to take advantage of growing interest. They include Revolut, Trading212, Free Trade, and Trade Republic. These new trading applications typically offer zero commission investing and include gamified features to encourage participation as well. I spoke to Eric Liu, an analyst at Vanda Research, who tracks U.S. retail trading activity. We're kind of at the crossroads in Europe, and so you've seen a number of uh, very successful uh, kind of smaller companies uh, attempt to do what Robinhood has done here in the U.S. What's driven the boom in your view? In uh, Europe, many people have uh, realized that the statutory pension system of the state is not working anymore, right? And so they face a massive pension gap. And they figured that uh, participating in capital markets is really one source to solve the problem. And so we have seen millions of people to enter in capital markets for the very first time in their lives. So could this be the catalyst Europe has been waiting for? Are we going to see a boom in retail investing? It is a very complex and interesting issue. The digital transformation is certainly 
a very positive element of the effort that we are doing to try to make the retail investor close to capital markets. On the other hand, of course, it's a phenomenon in general which needs to be kept a little bit under control. Among the risks policymakers and regulators are most concerned with are those associated with payment for order flow, something the European Commission is planning to ban. Payment for order flow is what makes trading on platforms like Robinhood free. Back in the day, I couldn't buy stocks off an app. I had to make a call to my broker, who would then call the stock exchange to make the trade for me. The broker charged a hefty fee for the privilege. Now when you buy stocks on one of these new free trading services, they send your purchase on to another company that makes the trade actually happen. This middleman company, called a market maker, needs both buyers and sellers in order to make their business model work. That's why they pay companies like Robinhood for your trades, hence the term payment for order flow. Payment for order flow has been in the market um, um, uh, for a very long time. It's used by um, uh, big banks and by insurances alike. And it's really the driving force by uh, lowering commission fees, which is especially empowering low income um, 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 families to, to, to trade for reasonable costs. This model makes trading cheap. It makes it easy. But regulators argue it's also risky and doesn't have the interests of retail traders at heart. These risks include potential conflicts of interest when a trading platform routes an order to a middleman for their own benefit or when a market maker doesn't offer the best price for a trade. The policy makers have to try and find the right balance between on the one end flexibility and encouragement in promoting all the new tools and instruments and trends which of course uh, help to reduce costs help to make people uh, more attracted and, and, and more interested in investing. But on the other hand, we should not uh, underestimate the risks that this uh, entails and investors should be fully informed about those risks. For many people, financial products and services remain complex. In fact, what is the stock market is the most common FAQ page visited by Robinhood investors. So if Europe bans the payment for order flow model, is it possible for a platform like Robinhood to exist in Europe? And if not, is retail investing on the continent here to stay? This is a trend which will have no comeback. It's like social medias. Uh, once this is open, the Pandora box is open, then you won't get back. I think they're here to stay. Like I basically intend to continue um, you know, investing all my uh, discretionary income in, uh, in the market in some, in some capacity. In terms of the importance of retail investors uh, over the past year and a half, that's not going to change. And I think the cat's out the hat. And, and at this point, um, I, I think everyone is going to need to follow retail investors going forward.